Hello everyone and welcome to Weekend Chats with AM and PK. Hi everybody, it's always great to see you. So today we're just going to go ahead and kick it right on off talking about solidarity and our friends at Save2020.org. Now just in brief, for those of you that never heard of them, they are a digital platform that gives voice to all of these different projects of kindness and compassion and solidarity that are taking place all over the world as a result of the pandemic that we're all living in. So it's really a place to collect stories and voices and, and share experiences and a lot of feel good, I would say. So if you were watching last week, which I'm sure you were, we were in the favelas of Brazil following one of their stories. And today we are in Paris, right, TK? That's right, that's right. So this week we looked at one of the initiatives happening in France, initiated by Maud, and she has actually uh, this, this page called Vogato, which means your cakes, and is baking cakes for healthcare workers. And she has over 6,000 volunteers at the moment helping out, and we caught up with her and also one, one of the volunteers and uh, you can see that healthcare workers are really, really happy to get these uh, tweets by the team. And of course, if you want to watch that video, you'll find it on our website and as well on Facebook and Instagram. And talking about all these initiatives that are happening during this pandemic, you can also see that people are somehow getting more creative, like crisis make you uh, more creative. You have to do something. Um, you have to get out of your comfort zone. And AM, you also looked at something. I think it was a film premiere uh, that happened in a different setting. Yes, totally. Um, it, it's, it's so right. You are so right. I mean, these times are really making people have to really think out of the box because in uh, times of social distance, you cannot have a red carpet premiere for a film or a new TV series. So these uh, guys in Germany have come up with a way to do it, as I say, in a box. And how, I mean, how does that look like? How does it work, actually? When you look at it, it's like, it's like a, it looks like a Zoom meeting in the end. But the point is that they have a live video box system that they can ship to your house, to the items, you know, to the to the talent's house. And all they have to do is basically open it up, plug it in, and there's a screen and there's a microphone and there's a camera, and everything gets, you know, sent live. It's a live video feed, and they can just send it right into the control room of the production company. And you know, and it really is a way to kind of preserve that spirit of um, celebrating the start of something, the premiere of something, um, without being able to do it on an actual red carpet, right? So I found it quite, uh, I, I found it quite ingenious, actually. I could, but I can feel, I, I, I can imagine that you're still quite lonely because all that glam and glitter of the red carpet is kind of away. Are people, can people actually join? Do you have an audience or is it the red carpet just for, for the actors and producers? Well, in this case, it was just for the host and then five actors. And uh, I didn't mention this before, but it was season two of Das Boot, which is a, a German TV series. And um, so it was really just the six of them. And it was an online premiere, so people could watch. But they did tell me, the producers, that the next step is to be able to have interaction, yeah. right? So that people can write in or call in and ask questions directly. But the first time, it was only them. Okay, so but they're thinking about continuing that format. Yes, absolutely. He said he got a lot of phone calls uh, mm -hmm. during the, the presentation itself of studios and production companies that are interested in going this way because for the time being, there is no other option, right? It's a success for them, but hopefully it won't be needed for too long. Yes, I mean, we, we hope so, right? They, he, they, they assume that not this year, but hopefully by next year, we'll be able to start seeing those red carpets rolled out again. But, but yeah, you never know. You just, you just really, you don't know how these things are going to play out and, and whether or not studios are going to continue to invest the same amount of money that they've been investing up to this point, because those things are very expensive to put on, you know, and they require a lot of planning and um, especially the bigger productions. Mm -hmm. So these big budgets, I don't know, it, it's like with everything. Like, like whatever. It's like with your, it's like with your um, online art fairs, Tanya, that you have been covering and following. And the story that we talked about last week, 
where that went viral on social media, the interview you did with Dominic Levy and talking about how Art Basel, is it going to survive just as an online platform? You don't know if people are gonna buy into that kind of thing. Yeah, actually, yeah, I was just thinking the same thing when you mentioned this uh, going online and it's not the same thing. And her interview got, uh, as we said last week, we talked about how it got picked up on Twitter. Now this week it has been quoted by so many newspapers, including the Financial Times and Artnet News, the art newspaper. Um, I think because she really uh, spoke about how she thinks that an online art fair has no future. Uh, one thing they quoted from the interview was also that she said, you know, you're not having fun. You're not seeing your friends um, if you go to an online art fair. So she just really was very vocal about not being a fan of it, that it was actually the opposite of an art fair. Nevertheless, as much as she likes art fairs, she just doesn't believe any of it will happen this year. She thinks no art fair will happen before we actually have a vaccine. And as you might know, Art Basel has been pushed to September of this week in Basel. At the moment, it's still happening. Mm -hmm. The Federal Council announced that at the moment, until the end of August, you can have right. these events. But they're kind of keeping September you know, open but it's kind of in the clouds. But she's very vocal that she doesn't think that it's going to happen. But at the same time, the online art fair is no alternative for it. So yeah. That's it's interesting because it feels, it sounds to me like she just really hit a nerve in the sense that she said what a lot of people were thinking and hadn't said. <laughs> Yeah, and, and at the same time, she, she told me she has never missed an Art Basel. She went to Art Basel since uh, her age, the age of three years old. So she never missed yeah. one. She loves the fair. But yeah. still, she was very critical about the things, you know, that many people probably think as well. You know, it looks mm -hmm. good. It sounds good, all these online activities. But come on, let's be frank. It's not the same thing. Yeah. And of course, if you want to catch that interview, right, Tanya? It's on our website. Yes, it's on our website, it's on YouTube. And AM, just to wrap it up, this mm -hmm. video by Adley. <laughs> so good. I got so it from you and I got it from my mom. Oh, <laughs> what is funny about it? That is so funny. Okay, guys, so it's funny. It's funny because um, she really, what she, she talks about how contradictory everything is, all of the information that we're getting. You should go outside, but you shouldn't go outside. Your kids should eat, should, should be around the parents, but they shouldn't be around the grandparents. Um, you know, you should eat this, but you shouldn't eat that. You should use disinfectant, but not, not all the time. And I don't know, I just found her hilarious. I don't know, she really like summed it up for me. So, I mean, let's leave them with this, yes? Yes. I think it'll at least put a smile on your face. First, you must not leave the house for any reason, unless of course you have a reason, and then you may leave the house. All stores are closed, except those that are open. And all stores must close unless, of course, they need to stay open. This virus is deadly, but don't be afraid of it. It can only kill people who are vulnerable and also those who are not vulnerable. We should stay locked down until the virus stops infecting people. And it will only stop infecting people if enough of us get infected that we build immunity. So it is very important that we get infected and also do not get infected. You should not go to the doctor's office or the hospital unless you have to go there. Unless, of course, you are too sick to go there. This virus has no effect on children except for those children in which it affects. The virus remains active on different surfaces surfaces for two hours or four hours or six hours but in most cases it's days and not hours and it needs a damp environment or a cold environment that is warm and dry in the air unless the air is plastic schools are closed so you need to homeschool your children unless you can send them to school because you are not home if you are at home you can school your children using various portals and online classrooms unless you have poor internet more than one child only one computer or you are working from home baking cakes can be considered math science or art if you are home educating you can include household chores within their education curriculum and if you are home educating you may start drinking at approximately 10 a.m every day if you are not home educating children you may also start drinking at approximately 10 a.m masks are useless at protecting you against the virus but you still need to wear one because it can save lives and in some cases it may even be mandatory but also maybe not mm -hmm.